what's the most advanced way to treat breast cancer? Renowned surgeon Dr. Beth Dupree tells us right now on It's Your Call. Hello everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Lynn Doyle and as you know, I've been committed to educating you about breast cancer for quite some time now. This hour, we're going to continue our series by bringing you the latest developments in breast cancer treatment and research. And joining us to do that is Dr. Beth Dupree. She is the medical director for the breast program at Holy Redeemer Hospital and she's now the chair of the American Society of Breast Surgeons Board of Advocates. Beth, it's great to have you back with us. Thank you, Lynn. How are you? I'm great, thank you, and congratulations to you. I understand that you have a new opportunity that you're pursuing now. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people were concerned when our facility closed last year, but when one door closes, another one opens, and through the entire process of the time that we were developing our breast center, Holy Redeemer was one of the hospitals that really supported the mission and vision, and women and infants in the aging population was always one of their missions, so creating a center of excellence for breast disease through Holy Redeemer was a very natural fit. So we've uh, been able to maintain the same quality of care for our patients and actually work toward recreating that entire concept of a comprehensive breast center. Let's talk a little bit about comprehensive care before we talk about the latest treatments because for a lot of people this is a relatively new way of treating breast cancer. One of the things that's happened over the years when someone gets a diagnosis of breast cancer or even more specifically an abnormal mammogram, it's the time from the mammogram to the evaluation by a doctor to a biopsy that can be incredibly challenging for a patient. So having an individual such as a nurse navigator or some healthcare professional who is basically walking the patient through the process and making sure they get to where they need to be can be incredibly helpful. We have a program called the Fast Track Program where when someone has an abnormal mammogram, we like to make sure that that patient gets evaluated by a physician in a timely fashion, has a biopsy, and then from that point gets all of the appropriate consultations. When you get a diagnosis of breast cancer, it requires a team approach. So comprehensive means we've created the team, and when you come to us, we will then place you in contact with those you need to be with. How does that differ from a, a more traditional way or a past way of dealing with the diagnosis of breast cancer? Well, for a lot of women, when they were diagnosed with cancer years ago, they would go to their gynecologist, have an abnormal mammogram, possibly have a biopsy by a radiologist or a surgeon, and then the surgeon would do the surgery and they would later see the medical oncologist and the radiation oncologist or other um, care providers. What we like to do now is make sure that we have as much information up front to give the patient their options. Almost every woman that's diagnosed with breast cancer it has the opportunity to decide whether they would like a mastectomy with reconstruction or whether they would like to do breast conservation and radiation therapy. But for someone to make a choice about how best to treat their cancer, they need to be educated and you need a team approach to be able to do so. And so many institutions have adopted this because instead of taking a paternalistic approach to it and saying, Mrs. Jones, this is what you need to do to treat your cancer, we've said, Mrs. Jones, let's educate you, let's empower you, and find out what's best for you. How have the patients been responding to this comprehensive concept of care? I would say for the vast majority of patients, it's been very, very good for them because they don't feel as though the ball gets dropped along the way. One of the scariest things that happens is if you have a diagnosis of cancer and you don't feel like you have a team or a game plan, when something comes up and you didn't expect it, it's like getting kicked in the gut once again. And once you get hit with a diagnosis of breast cancer, that's like the last kick in the gut you really want to have. And I always liken it to being at the edge of a cliff. If we educate our patients and we empower them and give them the knowledge to make the choices and say, these are the things along the way that you could potentially come up against, they're never at the edge of that cliff falling off. They're always at the point where they say, okay, I knew this what might have been coming. For example, let's say you have an abnormal um, biopsy and you've, you've found that you have cancer. Okay. If you would are anticipating wanting to have a lumpectomy, which is removal of the cancer with the rim of tissue, followed by radiation therapy. You may go through um, the process ahead of time by meeting the radiation oncologist. And I also typically have my patients meet the plastic surgeon. Because in the event that we find out that the tumor may be larger or more significant than we thought, it allows us to be able to have a plan for that patient where 
they don't come out of the operating room and say, oh, now I need a mastectomy and reconstruction and not know the plastic surgeon or not know what that entails. So education about all of the options is key. Okay. Knowledge and educating patients and viewers is what the two of us have been committed to for many, many years. Absolutely. So that's exactly what I want to use this time to do. And of course, we always invite you to be part of our conversation. If you have questions, if you want to share an experience that you've had, or perhaps you've recently gotten a diagnosis, you're concerned, anything at all, if you want to go ahead and email us a question, a couple of different ways that you can do it, um, Beth will be answering your questions uh, after the program is done. You can log on to csinphilly.com and then you can put in it's your caller IYC under the search button that'll take you to my webpage where you can leave us a comment or you could email me directly here is our email address here at the show it's tcn underscore IYC at Comcast comcastnetwork.com you can also find us on Facebook MySpace and YouTube I want to talk about um, We've, we've done many, many times uh, what the warning signs are and what you as a woman or someone who loves a woman should be doing in terms of self-exams and seeing your doctors and doing all of those kinds of things. So we've covered those on previous programs. Now I want to talk about what happens if, in fact, you do find something unusual, irregular, troubling. What's the first thing a woman should do? First of all, any woman over the age of 40 should be getting an annual screening mammography. And what that entails is, a, is four different views of the breast. It should be done on an annual basis. Most centers in our area, we're very fortunate, have screening digital mammography, which means that they're using the best technology. Now, sometimes I hear that the mammograms can miss things and that, that if you feel something that feels abnormal, you should get right to the doctor and not necessarily say, well, I had my mammogram nine months ago, I'm sure I'm fine. If you have a mammogram that's normal, that's a great start. But if you feel a lump in your breast, if you see a change in the skin, if you have a nipple discharge or some change that you notice is different from this month to last month, you absolutely need to see a physician. And the reason is 80% of breast cancers are found mammographically, 20% are not. So for those 20% of breast cancers, women are the ones that find the abnormality and they need to go to their doctors. So when you say see a doctor, and I'm, I'm not trying to be oversimplifying this situation, but do you go to see your family doctor? Do you see your GYN? Do you immediately make an appointment with someone like yourself who is a breast surgeon? I know that's a question that women have. I'd like you to answer that one. A lot of it depends upon insurance carriers. If you are part of a health maintenance organization, you may need to have a referral to a physician and I know there are some primary doctors in my area that if a patient calls and says I found a lump in my breast they may say I'm gonna give you a referral right away to see a breast surgeon or they may say I'm gonna give you a referral to see your gynecologist a lot of it depends upon independent practices but you have to see the physician first and this is the important thing if you see a doctor and you have a lump in your breast and that physician says it's absolutely nothing and they just kind of kind of blow it off so mm -hmm. to speak yeah that's the point where you have to say, you know what, I know my body, I know this is different, and that's the time to get a second opinion. Most doctors in this day and age are not going to overlook a palpable lump in the breast. They're going to send you for an evaluation, and that evaluation should include, depending upon how long since the last mammogram, a diagnostic mammogram okay. and an ultrasound. Ultrasound scans are not used to screen for breast cancer. They're used to diagnose a specific problem. Any palpable lump, any lump you feel or change in the breast that you feel should have an ultrasound as a diagnostic procedure. So after that diagnostic mammogram or ultrasound, when the results come back, even if it's negative and you still feel a lump, I saw a patient in the office today, her mammogram was normal, her ultrasound was normal. When I saw her in the office, I said, I absolutely feel it. I feel it more when she sits up and less when she lays down. And it's probably not cancer but it's still a lump that wasn't there before and even though it may just be a change that's happening with the age that she's becoming she's getting perimenopausal that mass still needs to be biopsied but were she not to come and have it evaluated I wouldn't know that the reports can say it's negative but if there is a discrete mass if there's a lump that you cannot prove you know some lumps you can prove are benign if it's a cyst you can put a needle in it and take fluid out of it but if there's something in your breast that is persistent even if the studies are negative, you still should see a breast specialist, such as a breast surgeon. And that's what I was going to ask, is if you've had the mammogram and you've had an ultrasound and it's still there, um, 
you see the breast surgeon, what are the various ways 